Alright, let's get at it. I just realized that I keep doing this like 1030 thing. Yeah. Uh, and it does me nothing. Like, I do this 1030 thing because it's like I'm trying to sync up my audio, but uh, I'm not doing anything. Like, you know, I'm not doing anything to sync up my audio because I'm not recording at the same time. So it's like I'm sitting there moving my mouse over 10 and then I move it over to 30 because that's how many time, how many seconds I can move like back and forth. And sitting there thinking to myself, how stupid am I? <laughs> Just realizing now it does me nothing, you know, because I don't have the visual component to do anything, but building it up now. I'm just going to have to kind of sit there and I don't know, work it, listen to it, watch it, work it, do all that stuff. I like this part. We get to see the spacey elevator come down. And I mean, like, look at that thing. This is like all over the place. just wobbling. And then it kind of gets built. Can you imagine how precise that shit has to be? So then it just is like. Doesn't fuck up. It's like almost when, you know, a rocket launches and the shit falls away, it has to fall away at precisely the right time so that it doesn't get caught up. The rocket doesn't get caught up and launches weirdly. And then another thing that's always really trippy about uh, rocket launches is as the rocket's going up, it's going straight up, but it looks like it curves because the world is rotating, right? So where they launch from in like a few minutes isn't where they're not like straight above it anymore because being straight above it, they can't because the world rotates. So it's so weird because the rocket's just going straight, straight to the point that they were just sitting upright at. It just makes a straight beeline because you want to get into outer space. You don't want to walk around in gravity and be brought back to Earth without fuel because it's not going to end very well. There'll be a lot of explosions <clears throat> and a hard landing. It ain't going to be like landing in the ocean. But uh, yeah, so it's always kind of weird to see it like a curve. Here I am taking a lot of time to place this. Even though I'm only making smart plates, it's not like I'm doing anything crazy. But uh, yeah, we're finally getting into phase two, getting completing phase one, starting phase two. Here I'm messing with the because um, this will this will unlock eventually, and then you can put these slugs in there and power the shit up. That's what I was thinking about doing was powering this up you know to have them make stuff quicker but I think I end up just eventually just giving up and just putting everything because I don't want to give up like all my rotors but it's like I need to make some rotors I need to put some rotors in there so I can make the smart plating but uh, yeah you know it's a uh, oh it's a good time you know Good time. We're moving on. We're getting out of here. Oh yeah, that's. Nah, I wasn't trying to just place all my rotors in there, or like specifically have something. I was just trying to specifically get to 50. Like I don't know. Maybe there is a way where you can like split a stack by numbers. But you know, it takes you know 50 of each rotors and advanced plates to. Uh, make 50 smart plates and I'm trying not to make more than necessary on this one I think it would have been fine because uh, I can't remember what the next phase took but I know now that it takes more smart plating so having even more smart plating wouldn't have been an issue but I just I just can't remember you know exactly you know in what smart plates are used for so I just don't want to spend a bunch of resources making a bunch of smart plates that then have no use you know so it's like that's why I was trying to just get to 50 but I couldn't for the life of me you know just split in half and continue splitting a stack of 60 in half to the point where I could get 
<laughs> ten by themselves to put back into it so that I have an even 50 stack of rotors. So that's when I just went and got to the 100 stack and split it in half. But yeah, you know, it would be nice if you could hold down, like, you know, I don't know, the S key or something, and then click on a stack, and then have, like, a, a drag bar or just a specific number that you can type in then, and then get a split from that stack in that number, if possible, you know. So it's like, out of the 60 rotors, I could sit there, do the S split stack thing, and put, uh all of the, you know, do the split stack and then just take 10 off of the stack, you know, or take 50 out of it, you know, a specific number, instead of just splitting. I don't, I don't think there's any, anything like that yet in Satisfactory, and that would be a nice thing, because it's like, that happens quite often, you know, you just want so many of one thing, and instead of being able to just split it, be done with it, you don't get that option, so you have to sit there and try and split it and split it until you get the stack that you want, or just deal with having a bunch of uh, extra material. And that's what I wanted to avoid was having just a bunch of smart plates, even though, like I said, this time probably wouldn't have been such an issue. But I'm continuing to develop this area. It has, um, I think two, no, it has four normal nodes of iron in this stack, and it has that one, I think, pure node of copper, and I think a pure node of limestone as well. So that's kind of what I'm just doing over here, I'm just getting it all set up, clearing out what left of the, of the biomass in this area. One so that I can continue to make. See, I'm not trying to make them fall in again. They're just too smart, man. They just know where the crevices are. They won't fall in. I really don't want to get him like locked in here, so I'm just kind of really hoping that he just, you know, doesn't <laughs> doesn't get into my way, kind of a thing. And here's where I uh, I wall off this area so that you don't just happen to fall in, because with my luck. That's what would happen. I would fall into this area. I think I end up changing this because it just keeps getting higher and higher. Maybe I don't. Maybe I, I leave it at that uh, one meter rise. I can't remember. See, I don't like that dirt sticking through. You know, when I put down concrete, I try and put it down in a way where... Uh, all this stuff is covered up. All of the grounds covered up. You know, another thing that would be cool to see Satisfactory end up adding, you know, maybe as like a later level thing, but uh, the ability to terraform that would be that would be cool. You know, if you could sit there and you could terraform uh, the ground into more leveled ground, that would be cool. You know, particularly it would be useful in like tier two when you really start to expand and stuff like that because then you're not just sitting there having to deal with uneven ground all over the place and see that fucking whale is on top of my shit again here's where I start to fill in this area because knowing myself I will fall down into that crevice area and I will not be a happy camper like even that like little corner needs to be just sealed up because I I would fall. Uh, but uh, yeah, so what am I gonna talk about this time? And this is a, this isn't even like it. I think I still have one more post commentary to do after this, and then I'll be I'll be caught up with everything else, and then I can really just start to schedule this stuff up. You know, this is I kind of hit like this weird bowl where I was kind of putting this off for a while doing this post commentary because I don't like it you know again it's just a lot of rambling on my part you know and uh, 
just I don't like post commentary. I know it was like a thing in YouTube back in the day. People liked post commentary better than live commentary because I don't know maybe the stories, you know, more, more I don't know, more of a process feel maybe. But yeah, you know, I just don't like this. I guess I can start talking about some of the games then that I want to do because I already talked about beer, I talked about talkies, I talked about all this stuff. So some of the uh, different games that I want to bring to my channel as I get a little bit more audio bugs going on. At least I don't have that click anymore. Uh, I want to bring Heroes of Mind Magic to this. You know, if not three because I like 3. I like 3 a lot. 3, in my opinion, was the best. And a lot of people can back me up on this. A lot of people think Heroes of Might Magic 3 is the best. And there he is. Getting in the freaking way again. I gotta take out the trash. It's just too bad he won't run off the edge. Uh, but uh, I'm, I know that Hero 3 graphically isn't the best, you know, isn't like up to the most, you know, they're still using sprites and stuff like that instead of models, but uh, I'm also willing to play 6, but to play 6, I would really need, you know, like a confirmation. I don't know if you guys want to see 6, because I know that 6 isn't the, uh, the most fun, I mean, I, I don't know, it's alright, but I ran into not really liking it so much. Personally, my favorite of all all hero games, right? We're talking all heroes of might magic as the whale just glitches through my foundations. Uh Heroes of Might Magic 2. That one I liked the best. The art style, the music, the races that were available, the creatures in the races. You know, that one I could talk all about. I mean, because you just had your your hero of that race. So it's like, if you were a warlock, you had the warlock hero sprite. I mean, you had different profile pictures for each of the warlocks. As I lag my ass off, apparently, putting down these foundations. Uh, but, uh, I just... Or was I? Uh, right. The profile picture. So you got like different profile pictures all the time. You know, so you, if you were a warlock, you could look like... One of my favorite warlocks was this guy who kind of had like, I don't know, like a raincoat, but he kind of looked like a uh, sea captain. Like he should be on like a, uh, a salmon boat somewhere, industrially uh, fishing up salmon for a living. But uh, instead he was a warlock. Uh, and, you know, I just liked it. There was only one building in Heroes of Mind Magic 2 that had, I think it's because I'm doing stuff and then that, like, chunk of land loads in and then it really starts to mess up the audio. I don't know. That's not, it's not fun to listen to. It's not fun to try and talk over either. So trust me, I, you know, I hope that doesn't happen too much in any of the videos, but, uh, there's not much I can do about it, you know. I don't know how to fix it. It's, uh, it has to be like my computer not being able to handle recording and the game at the same time, but I can never tell while in the game because the game doesn't lag. The game doesn't start lagging for me until like super late in the game when there's a lot of conveyor belts going around moving. You know, because like I can guarantee you in this moment right now where that sound glitch happened, to me, it never freaking happened, you know? I never lagged, never, it never like glitched out audio -ly for me, or anything like that. Here, I think I'm trying to figure out the, uh, the height for this stuff. But, I always... Uh, I never have like one race that I like above all the other ones in Heroes of Mind Magic. But uh man, I'm getting that that ear piercing click again. 
Not fun. Trust me, not fun at all. But uh, some of my favorite creatures from Heroes of Might and Magic 2 that I like. I think I like the Wizard's Castle the best out of Heroes of Might and Magic 2. Uh, probably followed by... Uh, I would have to probably say the Warlock just because like the wizards were aesthetically pleasing to me. I liked all the characters in it and it had a tier 1 archer that you could s just spam. Oh look at him moonwalk. That's fantastic. Everybody likes hover whales, right? They're the size of story buildings. Two story high buildings. But um, I, I, you'll, you'll find out a trend that I like tier 1 missile units. I mean, they can be easily wiped out, but I always try and get my hero worked out so that I go first. And then, usually you get that tier 1 archer to go first. And then you have like a thousand of these tier 1 archers all shooting at once, and they just rack things. You can just destroy stuff. And you can have multiple groups of them too, because you just get so many of them. But yeah, they had the tier 1 archer. They also had two archers because besides the tier 1 archer then there was like a tier I don't know, maybe 4 creature that uh, also had range. And I think that's why I liked the wizard castle the best. is because it had three archers in it. You know, the tier 1 archer that uh, couldn't be upgraded. And then it had the tier 4 archer that could be upgraded, and it was just a more powerful version of itself. And then the uh, tier 7 creature started off melee, but then eventually became ranged. And it had really strong ranged, like ammo, I guess you would say, or like uh, power, really strong power, and not a lot of ammo. So it was like pretty much you had like, you know, a thousand crossbowmen, and then you had like, you know, a thousand, uh, no, you had like thousands of slings. I remember the tier one creature had like a sling. They were like hobbits or something and they would just sling rocks at people. So you had like thousands of these like hobbits that would just sling thousands of rocks at people. And then the tier four was like a wizard who would cast like, I don't know, magic missiles. But then when you upgraded them, they cast it like fireball or lightning or something like that. And they could even buff other people you know, in the party for like... I can't remember what the spell was that it would be that they buffed them by. Maybe they didn't even. Maybe that was another one that I'm thinking about. But uh, then the, like, the titans would become... Or the giants would become titans. And then the titans had like freaking lightning bolts that they would throw. Just massive lightning bolts that would just fuck up people so hard. It was so cool. And not only that, but the wizards were also really strong in magic, and they had like a couple people that were really strong. They had like, um, they had rocks, which were flying, uh, big giant flying birds, but they were also really, really tanky. And then they had golems, that were also really, really tanky. And then they had like a faster skirmishing, you know, guy on the tier 2 that I would usually give up. They were like boars. But they were never nearly as good. You know, when you got the boars, it was just like, okay, cool, I can close the distance if I have to on some like ranged people, but realistically, it wasn't like, you know, they were super OP and you couldn't upgrade them either. You could only upgrade the uh, the golems and then up. Well you can upgrade the golems, the wizards, and then the titans. Or the giants my bad. But the rocks, the uh, the rocks, the hob humble uh, halflings, I think they were halflings. I think I called them like hobbits before. And the the pigs you couldn't upgrade, so you can only like upgrade half the roster. But I think that was to make up for the fact that you had literally really tanky units, and then a bunch of ranged units, and then really good magic on top of them. I think they were honestly like 
the most OP class or uh, castle that you could play as most OP race um, to the point where it's like you could play as the warlocks and the warlocks are good like the reason why I have them second on my roster is because again uh, they have a tier one archer that you can just spam a bunch of them uh, they were actually really fast the tier one archers they were only the only archers that you had but they were really fast you could get a lot of them uh, really crappy in melee because of how fast they were they were more of a like a kite kind of a thing than to sit there and actually fight anything hand to hand but then uh, you know the warlocks they were also really good at spells but they also had like flying gargoyles and they were they were all right I think I gave them up most of the time too because they just got outclassed by other things like the warlocks had some of the best early game for shutting down like ranged flying units because or not ranged flying units ranged units because they had the tier one ranger or the tier one archer that you could just decimate enemy ranged with but then they had the gargoyles which were really just tanky they weren't like the best in melee but they could sit there and they could lock down an archer for days just like seven rounds go by and they may have lost like a few units uh, but then also they got for their tier three unit griffins and the griffins they were something else they had high health and they had a lot of damage on those sides so they were really good like fly in take a hit kill off the ranged units fly out they weren't as good as the gargoyles for sticking in and fighting but then after that they had I think it was like minotaurs and the minotaurs they were kinda I don't know they were really slow but they were decent melee fighters you know to fight off the rest of the other melee units in the game and then you had Hydras, I think they were. Uh, and those were good because I always liked them because you could sit there and you could hit everything around you. And that was good. That was a really useful thing to have because, you know, you would just stick the... They were really slow to deal with this because they were just really tanky and uh, they could hit all around them. But they weren't like the most powerful uh, creature in the roster because it would just be a little too OP to have something that's super tanky that can hit everything around it and then just one shot everything around it as well so they made up for it for just being super tanky and then uh, also they were really slow like you had to really just send them in for them to be effective at all for like any any matter of, of being I guess because <laughs> otherwise it was just like agonizing to have to try and chase things down with the snakes it just wasn't worth it but uh then we get to the real meat and potatoes of the warlocks because they had dragons they had red dragons and this was the only building in heroes of mind magic that had three upgrades to it and the only monster that you could upgrade three times everything else had like pretty much a one upgrade you know, it's just like you couldn't upgrade any of the first three tiers of the Warlock, Warlock class, but then you could upgrade the Minotaurs. You couldn't upgrade the Snakes, but I think that was all to make up for the fact that you could literally sit there and upgrade the Dragons three times. You had Red Dragons, Green Dragons, and then finally the best of the Dragons, Black Dragons. Black Dragons were the best Dragons. They were just hands down the best dragon. There was only like one other dragon anyways and that was a uh, bone dragon. But the bone dragons, they didn't have a breath attack, they were just decent melee combatants, uh, high elf pools, and they could fly. But uh, otherwise they were really lacking the immunities, the tankiness, and just the overall ownage that could come out of a black dragon. So I wouldn't really say that they were the best dragon. Uh, they were a decent runner-up, but that's because that's all they had. Uh, that's all they were, was a runner-up. Um, let's see. What else? Uh, oh. 
So then I guess I'd have to say my like third favorite out of it. It kind of gets like split here at this point. Like like I said before, I liked all of them, all of the different uh, castles that you could play as. But those were my top two, and I don't know. It really gets like mixed between uh, the knights, the barbarians, the. Uh, the sprite or the phoenix castle. I mean, I'm just gonna refer to them as their like last one. So it's like the knights got a big knight, like a heavy ironclad crusader kind of knight, and uh, the barbarians they got cyclopses, the undead got the bone dragons, and uh, the sprites got uh, phoenixes. Um. But yeah, I, I think I, my, my least favorite was the sprite one, because they only had, like, really one archer, which was a monk, which just kind of got bullied by everything else. It was never really that strong. It was like a fourth tier, so you could never really get a whole lot of them. The unicorns were really good, because I think even back then they could blind things. Which, blind is like the best spell in any of the early heroes. I think even in the fourth game, blind was still pretty good. Because it's like, it just shuts down the creature. They can't attack, they can be attacked without losing their blindness. No, that's a lie. I think they lose blindness if you attack them. Uh, but yeah, that's just like, they don't move, they don't defend, they don't attack, they do, they do nothing. They're like, they're blind. And I don't know why that's like that, where they just, just like, they just don't do anything. Like, I feel like, even if they're blind, like, they should still be able to move a little bit. You know? Or have, like, a chance of becoming not blind, because blind was just OP. But, uh, the phoenixes, I don't know, again, they were just, like, lesser dragons, you know? They just weren't really good. I think they had, like, the immunities, but they just were, like, I don't know, glass cannons, if nothing else. Yeah. If you weren't trying to take them out with magic, that is. But, like, just a good amount of archers or even a strong melee combatant can just walk over and just take it out. You know. Um, and the only, really only good unit they had were the dwarves, because you could upgrade the dwarves. And the dwarves were just the best tank. Like, hands down, the best tank you could get. Oh, and they also had, like... A tier three archer too. They had two archers. I was wrong when I thought they only had like the one archer. They had they had more than just one archer. Um, their tier two archers or tier three archers were my particular favorite of the archers of the game uh, because what you could do with it is you could sit there and shoot twice with these archers. These were the rangers, and you could shoot twice with rangers, and no other archer could do that. Um, those, those were some good archers for an early game, because they would just decimate. You could just easily, you know, kill things that other archer stacks couldn't super fast with them. Uh, and then let's see here. Uh, so that was the Sprite Castle. I didn't really like them, though. Outside of their archer, their double archers and doors. That's pretty much like some of my stacks, some of my other armies. That's all I would take on them. Like, because you eventually can't afford every creature uh, every week, you know, sometimes unless you got off to a really good start or you had gold mines or something like that. But I would just load them up with dwarfs and archers because, like, that's all, <laughs> that's all you needed is dwarfs and archers. Oh, okay, I did put down smelters. I was starting to say, like, I don't think I put down any smelters here. But, uh, yeah, uh, the dwarves were just something else, the archers were something else, everything else kind of crap for the, for the phoenix castle. What I have to say, I do like the cyclopses. See, I don't know, it's pretty much a, uh, a toss-up for me, because it's either the cyclops, castle or the uh, knight's castle 
for my third favorite one. And then it would probably be Necromancer Sprites because, or Necromancer Phoenix Castle. Uh, because the Necromancers, they only had one archer. And they weren't really too amazing. They were alright. I mean, like, they had uh, upgraded zombies that could paralyze people. I'm getting really, like, really bad sound bug here. Like, laggy audio really does not sound good. <laughs> that much is for sure. But, uh, yeah. The necromancers I never really liked. They were just good for, like, uh, amassing, like, a bunch of stuff. Like, you could get hundreds of skeletons uh, with a necromancer bonus or special special ability. Uh, but, uh, they just, they, I don't know, they just really weren't worth it. Uh, the knights. The knights were pretty cool. I liked them. They were pretty much like melee focused. They had peasants, which I usually would just give up on peasants because peasants were just garbage. They were unarmored. You could get a bunch of them, but they just did no damage. They just took no damage, did no damage. The only good quality about them was that you could amass them really quick. And then they had archers. The archers are all right, but you know nothing special to write about. For just having the one archer, it doesn't really ever do much. It was nothing special, like the double shot archers that were slow. I think they probably had like one of the better melees in the game. Again, nothing to uh, write home about. The barbarians had the best melee in the game for archers, but. Uh, now oh, that's really bad, like, audio. It's like my, my like, bass and my headphones died. <laughs> that's what I'm hearing now. Oh, I'm sorry about that, I'll have to apologize. But, uh, yeah, they had really good, uh, pikemen. Like, all of their infantry that I'm about to mention were, like, armored to the T. They had pikemen that were just really strong heavily armored, not so good at fighting, but better at defense, and then they had swordsmen that weren't so defensive, but better at fighting, and then, uh, I think I'm missing one, one of their people, because like every, every faction has like seven, I think that's seven units. Maybe not, maybe it is six. I think in Heroes 3 they ended up making it so that every castle had like seven units to to build so that you had to like drop one. So they had room for others, kind of a thing. But um Yeah, the swordsmen were better offense than they were defense, but they were still really strong, they were fully armored, and then they had uh cavalry that were just really fast, heavy hitting, armored horsemen. Uh, and then they had knights, like the Crusader knights. Full armor plated, double, uh, double handed swords. Just real mess up the enemy kind of unit when they close the distance. And then, uh, they, they were good. I like the knights. They were really strong if they could get to the, like, later tier stuff, but weak early on because all they had were peasants to work with. And so, wow, that's just really bad. <laughs> I'm not sure why that's happening to me when I build stuff. I guess it's happening to all the audio, but uh, hopefully that's not like that in all of the uh, episodes. I haven't listened to all of the episodes. I haven't watched all of them yet. Usually I watch them while I'm creating the YouTube video upload so that I can get ideas for, you know, the title and stuff like that. So I'm not sure why it's doing that. Hopefully that's just a, uh, like a session issue and hopefully it gets better later on. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Um, but then the Cyclops, they were something else too because the Cyclops, they had goblins that you could just spam really easily 
they had tier 2 archers that were just really tanky like when it came to just any kind of damage because like some would be tankier against ranged attacks and some would be tankier against melee I believe or I, I don't know I think maybe back at that time it was just the one like damage source so I don't think the archers necessarily had too many defenses I think that was a later thing too on the later uh, heroes but uh yeah, they had really good tier 2 archers that could just take a punch and keep punching. And then uh, their tier 3, I think, were dogs, like wolves. And they were really fast. They could attack twice. They were kind of weak. So it was like a hit, hit hard and fast first, and then you know deal with them later kind of a thing. And then uh, their... That's tier three. Their tier fours uh, were some of the tankier ones too, because I think they were called like behemoths or something like that. And you could, ooh, you could tank with those guys. Those guys were really good tanks. Everything in the barbarian uh, class was like all about fighting. They were all pretty much tanky monsters that could hit hard, just not necessarily a lot of strategy to them. They were just more of like a, a run mob kind of uh, situation. And then their tier 5 were uh, trolls that turned into bridge trolls and they could just chuck rocks all the time so that was fun. They could just chuck rocks all over the place. They were really like hard-hitting ranged and they were still pretty tanky in their own right. And I think they had the best, like, melee for ranged in the game. I don't think anything else could match it for a melee. And then lastly, they had the Cyclopses, which were really short range. But, uh... You know, they made up for it by being really tanky, powerful melee combatants. I think they were, like... I don't know. I don't think they were like the best, but they could, I think, also blind or paralyze or something off of their hit. And I think their hit could also go through things because it was like it was still like a ranged, but it was like a melee range uh, attack. So it's like they had to be right up next to you to hit you, but it was still necessarily a ranged attack because they were cyclopses. They were tall. And so they would like laser beam down at you. And the laser beam could cut through uh, a bunch of people. <laughs> Not a bunch of people, but two people. You know, it's just like the dragon of the breath would go through the first person into the second person. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think that I think that's all of the classes. I guess I didn't do the necromancers, but. I kind of did. I kind of touched upon them. There's not much to talk about the necromancers. I mean, they had skeletons. They were just skeletons. Zombies that could paralyze you. Or, they were like mummies that turned into better mummies that could then paralyze you, but... Yeah, they had vampires and liches and... Uh... Can't really remember what else, but they weren't they weren't that good. But I'd like to thank you guys for watching. That's all I have for you guys this time on my random tangents. Sorry I can't really, you know, do these post commentations better, but I really don't know what else to talk about. But thank you guys for watching. Uh hopefully I'll see you in another episode. Other than that, that's all I have for you. I'll see you later.